Yeah, I'm really glad with this. Who needs a new microphone when you have one that doesn't make background noise anymore? Anyways, welcome back to episode 3 of the tutorial, and this time I've decided to go over... I might actually have something... Yeah, if you guys are watching any episode, since I look at all my comments, put uh, in the comments what you would like me to cover. It has to be a topic that's like under 10 minutes, because I don't like my episodes to be over 10 minutes. I suppose it can go to 15, or I might have to go into multiple episodes. But I'll try and cover all the basics, and then I'll do an advanced one, and I'll cover anything advanced you want in there. However, it can't be too complicated. Like, you can't ask me to make an entire place. Sorry for the noise there. So, in this one, I'm just going to show you some basic, um, basic blocks. So, if you go into Insert Basic Objects, I'm pretty sure there's a tab somewhere here for it. There you go, that one. There's tons of little object things you can have here. So if you play games, you'll know that force field, if you double click it to insert it, you can then put it inside the brick and then it'll like give the should give the brick a force field. <laughs> Don't know why it didn't actually, that's that's new. Uh the flag and flag stand, those are um basically for capture the flag. The flag will respawn on that and then you can put in a flag or a flag stand just uh, to sit on the flag stand. The explosion it's literally as you think it would be. It just explodes and then disappears. So you want that to be inserted in a script um, using a new instance I believe. The frame is to do with GUI. Handles to do with other things. Hat the same. Hopper bin is to do with basic tools. Humanoid is one of the most important things if you're creating something like a tutorial. Now to actually make a block with text on top of it, which I'll cover in here, you get the humanoid, which I need to put inside the workspace. And then here's one other thing you need to know. There's a button up here somewhere, which I've now lost. There it is. This one here, group or control G which will group them together into a model. Now, it, as you can see right now, it doesn't have text above it. So, what you want to do is to have the certain block, say for example, I had three blocks. Oh, I accidentally put three models. Um, and then I, I'll move them into that model. And they say, for example, I wanted only one of these to display the text. I'll simply pick the one I want and rename it to head because the text will display over the block with called head. Uh, there's a few little things about this. Number one, if you set the transparency to anything over 0.95, it won't the uh, name won't show up, I believe. No, it must be anything over 0.99 because if you've set it to one the name disappears because it's completely transparent. So if you set it to 0.99, the block's invisible, but there's still a name there. So you pick the head block, set it back to zero, and as you can see right now, it has a little health bar. If you're doing a tutorial or having some message above something saying like, oh, and the model name is the message that it displays. So if you're calling it Bob, you might want it, and you might want it to have a health bar, and you can make it into a robot later or a human. If you simply want a message like don't come in here, it kills you, then you'll want to set the max health to zero. So then it doesn't have a little health bar and it's just floating text. Other than that, the other things for the humanoid are completely useless at the moment since it's not an actual human. So there you go. That's pretty much what you can do with the humanoids. Um, just going to copy over the basic head, rename it to brick for simplification. Uh, more image button, image label, those are for GUI, int value, and local script, more scripting. Message, it's not much use, it's in the start of GUI for some reason. You put it inside your player, and it will play a little message saying a certain thing. Um, pants and all of this, there's a model there, so you can just insert a basic model and then put stuff inside of it. 
so I can just drag the brick inside the model if I want. If my mouse isn't screwing up. Oh, my mouse is screwing up. There we go. You just drag the brick inside the model or back into the workspace and then delete the model. Now, um, I'll just expand this so you can see. Screen GUI script, that's the basic script. Shirt, shirt graphic skateboard platform, as you could probably guess. Here's another important one, a seat. This one, it, as you would probably guess, if your character walks onto it, he will literally just sit down. This has the same properties, go away, as a normal block would. You first have to anchor it. That's an important thing. Remember always to anchor your blocks if you don't want them to fall immediately. Because every basic block you get will not be anchored. So texture and decal are like the uh, things you put on top of a block to make it like have an image on the front. There's also a vehicle seat which allows you to drive truss part which is a truss. No way. <laughs> and trusses are quite interesting actually. I might should I'll should I'll cover them right now since I have quite a bit of time. So they'll basically come in grey, I'm just gonna keep it in grey. I'm gonna set it to corroded metal, because that looks cool for trusses. The main thing of, that I like about a truss though is this the style. Alternating supports, bridge style supports, and no supports. So alternating style supports means that it goes like that. Now you can set it so that it scales properly, which I'm going to do obviously. And there we are, it's alternating as you can see. Now that looks quite cool in my opinion. Bridge style supports means it goes one way and then the other way at a certain point. So that sort of has it means it has to be oriented, orientated some way. And no support means it's just literally a truss. That's good for making a ladder, say if you embed it in something. Uh, my favourite is alternating supports though, because one looks literally like a truss. And as you increase the size of it, which you can only do vertically, the amount of supports will increase. Oh, they can only be a certain limited size. And that's pretty much where you get the trusses. And wedge part is, as you would probably guess, a wedge. So what's special about a wedge is that you can walk up it like a ramp or drive up it like a ramp or anything instead of if you try if you got a triangle mesh and put it in a block so it's it will still be have the same properties as a block but it would look like a triangle that's what the mesh does it will still have the same hitbox so if you tried to put something on top of it or walk up it you couldn't with a wedge part if you put something on top of it you can see that it slants automatically to fit it so that's basically what it does you can resize it and have it steep or equal or really really not steep one thing I like to do is to have some sort of I'll just give an example here actually uh, do a quick example yeah one thing I really like to do is to have some sort of ramp using them it's really easy to make you you should obviously do it in many more steps than this. That's like a basic ramp. You should probably have more things and make sure there aren't random gaps like that. It's also um, completely pointless when it comes to C-framing, but I used to use it before I introduced this rotate tool here. Um, you, I always used to put a block on it, so it rotate it a certain way, and then from there rotate it separate ways. Like you rotate it randomly in different ways. But that's become redundant now, so there's no use for that really. And weld literally is used in like guns to hold pieces together. Now, sparkles, as you will probably guess, makes it sparkle. As you can see, little sparkles coming up there. If you can't see them, too bad. No, I'm joking. I'll change. It. I'll change the color so the sparkles are now pink. <laughs> Should be able to see that. You can also insert smoke into it. Which I'm not sure where it is. Why is it? Oh, there it is. Size 10. There we are. Smoking now. Set the smoke to yellow so it suits the block. There we are. So that's some of the basic values you can have. You can have them in being asserted by a script as well. And yeah, there's also fire, but 
it doesn't see. Oh, there it is. So you can also set the block on fire. If I insert the fire correctly, there we go. And you can also change the size of the fire to suit your pyromaniac needs. Heat you can also set, so I'm going to set that to 100. And it's going to super rise like that. Oh, it's max 25. So if I set it to 1, it will barely rise at all. Just used for making like torches. By a torch, I mean the one that stands, not the one you hold. Um, and a decal, you'll need to um, know the actual code for it. So for that, I'd recommend going into here. Oh, not the toolbox, sorry. Oh yeah, the toolbox, then switch it from models to decals here. And then pick a random decal. I'm just going to pick this cute little Pikachu. I'll stick it on the front still. If that doesn't suit your fancy, you can edit the decal's face where it is. And transparency is over. You can set transparency of them. I didn't know that. I'm just going to set it to the top. And there you go. Now you have a cute little Pikachu on your top. And the other fun thing you can do about that, uh, about this, is if you set the transparency of the block to zero, or to one rather, it still shows. So you can have it looking like that, and then underneath, or behind it, there's nothing there. When you go up, it clearly is. So that's how you create like a picture for a game, you just zoom in completely like that, and people can see it. You can still see that the block is actually there. But they can't actually see it. Don't know what on earth Roblox in 2.0. Okay, why that's such an amazing deco? I do not know. But there you go. That's the basic tutorials for blocks, decals, and all of the basic things you can do with a block and the types of blocks. Thank you for watching. Like, favorite, rate, comment, subscribe, and tune in for the next tutorial. Subscribe.